in the book of Ezekiel. Now don't get scared and don't get worried because I said Ezekiel. I really think that God wants to show us something in this place and open up our lives for what he can do more and remind us of some, of some things in our lives. Ezekiel 37, starting at verse 1, said, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. And then he caused me to pass by them and all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these, can these bones live? And so I answered, Oh Lord God, you know. And again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these. Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and breathe in you, and you shall live. And then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, and there was no, but there was no breath in them. And also he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breathe, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. And then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost. And we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O oh my people, I will open up your graves and cause you to come out from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O oh my people and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. I will place in you your own land, and then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. If you could put your Bibles right down right now, and you pray that God would be with us through the remainder of this service. So God... I need you. I need you, God, to speak through me. I need you, God, right now to strengthen me. And I pray, oh God, that you will pour out your spirit in this place again and breathe life into those, oh God. God, that there would be a move of the Holy Ghost, oh God, in this house, oh God, today. Let your anointing fall in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. God shows Ezekiel in this passage a vision. It is a valley of bones, a valley full of bones. It is a valley full of brokenness. It has the appearance, though, of something that used to be great. But it has fallen and laying broken and scattered now. God is showing Ezekiel a vision of what Israel had become. And while showing him this vision, he asked him a question and he said, Son of man, can these dry bones live? And Ezekiel replies to him, O oh Lord God, you know. 
I've had some moments in my life when God asked me a question, and I said, you know God. It's always a good answer to give him. He knows. And Ezekiel replied, and he, uh, the Bible says that God speaks to Ezekiel again, and he says, prophesy to those bones. Speak, Ezekiel, to that which has ran out of life. Speak resurrection into that which is laying dormant. S prophesy to that which seems to have no life. Tell them I will put back together that which is broken and dismantled. I will arrange them back in the order that I created them to be in. I will put breath back into them so that they can live in the way I called them to live. And I will restore them to the promise that I have for them. Today, a challenge is going forth much like that in Ezekiel 37. There are lives that have been called to ministry, but have fallen and let the call be a past memory of how God used to use you. There are spiritual giftings in this place that once were used mightily for the edifying of the body, but are laying dormant in this place today. There are lives that have been left dismantled from past mistakes or challenges of life. There are those who have given up on the call or the promise that God would use them to do something. There are those who are feeling the defeat in a valley of depression. There are people who have become content to just live in a valley. Today I have come to tell somebody in this place that you don't have to stay in your broken state of mind any longer though. You don't have to live in a valley of depression anymore. The anointing that you once felt flow through you can flow through you again. The uh, calling that was once placed on your life has not been removed from you. The giftings that God used you once before in can become active in your life again today God has not given up on you don't give up on God <laughs> Proverbs 18 and 21 says that death and life are in the power of the tongue so today I speak life into every one of these situations your brokenness will be mended here today your dismantled life can be put back together here today the hurt you experience can be healed here today the calling that God placed on you has not been repented off of your life the anointing can flow through your life again there are victories to be had in the present and in the future it's time to let go of the anger it's time to let go of the hurt it's time to let go of the bitterness and it's time to let the power of the Holy Ghost come into your life and renew you and refresh you and restore you The vision that God showed Ezekiel of the valley of dry bones was what Israel had become. It's what they had become. That's not what God planned them to be. It's not what God had called them to be. But rather over time and generation, they had become stagnant and complacent. Ezekiel compares them to a pile of bones that was very dry. Meaning this wasn't something they did earlier that day or earlier that week to, that resulted in the state of mind or the place that they were at. No, it was something that had happened and he compared it to, to the comparison was made to let Ezekiel understand that this was something that happened over time, over years, or decades even maybe. As time went on, the results ended up a valley of broken, dismantled lives. It was something that at first probably didn't seem that big of a deal. But the decision after decision had been made that left in them in a valley of broken, scattered, and without order. 
Here today, they're alive sitting in this place. They have the appearance of something that was once great. They show a resemblance to something that was mightily once used by God. Now lay in a valley of brokenness, scattered, dismantled, and without order in their life. Ministries that have been laid to the side. Callings that have been given up on. Giftings that aren't being used. Anointings that have dried up. You have not preached your last message. You hear me today. You have not taught your last Bible study. Hear me today. You have not flowed in the anointing or under the unction of the Holy Ghost for the last time. Hear me today. There are still giftings for God to operate through you in. Get yourself to an altar and let the Holy Ghost renew you, refresh you, and restore you. Don't just be content to stay in the valley. But instead, we become content to show up after, to service after service or even let day after day go by without flowing in the anointing that God has placed on our lives. It has become more convenient to not operate in what God has called us to than to accept the sacrifice that goes along with the call of God. We... <laughs> We want to be anointed, but we don't want the consecration it takes to be anointed. We want to be used of God, but we're not willing to sacrifice what it takes to be used by him. We want God to use us in this capacity or that capacity or this ministry or that ministry, but we're not willing to sacrifice what it takes to be a part of those things. It's easy to fall in the trap of the rich young ruler. Matthew 19 tells a story of a young man that comes to Jesus and says to him, I need to know what I need to do in order to gain eternal life. What do I need to do to better myself, Jesus? And Jesus looks at him and he tells him, he said, you need to keep the commandments. And some excitement, no doubt, comes into his life when he says, I have kept those since I was just a youth. And Jesus said, good, you've done well, but there's something else that you need to try to obtain. There is more than just that. Go and sell all that you have and follow me. And the disappointment sank into his heart because the Bible says that he was very wealthy. You see, it wasn't about the, it wasn't that the young man was wealthy that he couldn't obtain what Jesus was offering him. It was the fact that he wasn't willing to sacrifice those material things to gain eternal rewards. He wasn't willing to give up a lifestyle in order to have a life of consecration to God. The calling has been given. The anointing is being offered. The giftings are ready to be poured out. But are you willing to sacrifice what God is asking of you in order to obtain those things? Or are we just content to live in a valley? Are we just content to stay in the valley. If we're not careful, we fall into the trap of the mindset that God gets to use us instead of we get to be used by God. And now we've become content in our lives to live without both consecration and anointing. And now we find ourselves spiritually dismantled broken and laying in a valley that we never saw ourselves in we don't know how we got there it doesn't make sense this is not what i felt this is not what i wanted for my life but we lay broken in a valley Instead, we reminisce of the way that God used to use us instead of flowing actively in the anointing that once covered our lives. We think of yesterday and we say, God did this in my life instead of letting God do something today in our life. We've become content in the valley, living in a valley. 
Listen to me today. This isn't the way God intended for your life to be. That isn't what God wants for your life. That, it, that wasn't what God's purpose was in creating you and me. He doesn't want you to stay in a state of broken, dismangled, and, and uh, dismantled and mangled living. He has life for you, and it's greater than anything you ever thought possible. He has joy for you, and it's joy unspeakable. He has peace for you, and it passes all understanding. Don't be content to just live in a valley of brokenness. Don't be content to just stay in your broken state of mind. God wants more from you. God's calling more from you. God wants to anoint you and use you in ways that you never thought not possible that will absolutely blow your mind if you are willing to let some things go from your life and to pick yourself up out of the valley and say God use me however you want to use me whatever I have to give up God I'll give up whatever I have to surrender to you I'll surrender God because God I want to use I want to be used for your kingdom more than anything else. You haven't experienced the greatest move of God in your life yet. Look at the story of Samson with me. A leader who was powerful. From the moment that he was born, he had the hand of God on his life. But one day he decided there were some things that weren't as important anymore. And one thing left to another and a slow demise happened in his life. Eventually leading him to being captured by his enemy. Put on display in front of them so that they could mock him, spit on him and ridicule him. He became the spectacle of his enemy. And like Samson, the enemy of your soul wants nothing more for you than to be, for you to be content in the valley. Living your life as though yesterday was your best day. Living your life for God thinking that yesterday was as good as it gets for you. You haven't seen the greatest revival in your family yet. God hasn't moved on your life for the last time yet. You haven't flowed in the last anointing that you'll ever flow in yet. The power of God will move through your life again if you let him and if you'll pick yourself up and say, God, there's got to be more than just a broken, dismantled life. There's got to be more than just this. You haven't experienced the greatest move of God in your life yet. This isn't the end for you. God is not finished with you. Don't be content to just stay in a valley. Don't be content to live your life day to day in a valley. Samson wasn't content to just grind in the prison yard like a farm animal. He wasn't content to stay locked up being made a mockery by his enemy. The Bible says that the hair on top of his head began to grow again. He was at a state of brokenness but remembers the sacrifices that led to the power from on high. He was at a state of defeat but recognized that God wasn't quite through with him yet. So he got himself connected to the pillars and he prayed, oh, Lord God, strengthen me one more time. 
so that I can fulfill what you called me to do. Strengthen me one more time so that I can, God, operate how you wanted me to operate. Strengthen me one more time, God. And the Bible says that as he began to press against the pillars, that the walls fell and the house fell on top of the Philistines. And the Bible says that in that day, in that day alone, that he slew more than he had ever in his life to that point. He did more for God and the kingdom at that day than he had ever before in one moment. All because he said, There's not, this is not where God wanted me to be. This is not the end all for my life. This is not my final resting place. This is not the last time that God was going to use me. Today, someone needs to get connected again to what God is trying to do in your life. It's time to remember some old convictions that you once had. It's time to get reconnected to the purpose that God has called you to. It's time to remember the calling that God placed on your life. And if we can get our lives back in order that God called us in, I firmly believe that we're going to see God use us more in this time and more than he's ever before used us. If we can get our lives connected to his vision again, we can't be content to continue to live our lives in the valley. There are those who have been called to certain areas. You've had giftings placed on your life before. And some things, one thing led to another. And you find yourself at a place in life that you never expected yourself at right now. You're in a valley of broken, dismantled, and mangledness. And God is beckoning somebody here today to say, I've got more purpose than that for your life. I didn't create you so that you could stay at that point. If you let me and give me the opportunity, I'll put some things back together in your life. You don't have to wake up every day and look at the brokenness in your life anymore. If you'll accept what I'm offering you, then I'll heal that which is broken in your life. And I'll place some things in your life that you never thought were possible again. In Ezekiel's vision, something amazing takes place. That as Ezekiel begins to speak to the bones, God puts the bodies back together. Every bone to its natural place, every sinew, every ligament, every joint, every muscle group and tendon goes back to where it was originally supposed to be. As he prophesies, the skin begins to cover the bodies again. And God performs a miracle in the lives of the, in that vision and he sees it before his eyes. God put back the things that were dismantled and laying broken and scattered in the valley. Just as God did that in the vision that he gave Ezekiel about Israel, he's ready to do that today in this place. You've come here today And you've been broken by some things in your past. And you remember a time when it, it, when God operated through you. You remember a time when you could hear the voice of God and you could feel the presence of God. But there are some things that have happened in your life that have left you broken dismantled and out of order 
and you wonder if you'll ever be able to feel God like you used to. You wonder if they'll ever be able to operate under the anointing that you once operated under. You wonder if that calling that God placed on your life is still there. You wonder if God could ever use you in that gift again. If God could ever use you in that ministry again. He's ready. He's ready to put some things back together in some people's lives here today. Somebody hear me today. God's about to restore some people back to your recalling that he placed on your life at a young age. God has not repented his calling on your life. What happens is we make it tough for the calling to be used. But God's getting ready to restore some people back to your original purpose in this place today. God's getting ready to place some order back into some people's lives. You don't have to be content in the valley anymore. You don't have to be content in the valley any longer. You just need to find you an altar and let the power of the Holy Ghost change your life. There are broken lives here that people that that are going to be put back together. There are callings that will be renewed. There are marriages that God is going to restore order in here today. There are giftings that are going to be poured out. There are callings that are going to go forth. There are anointings that are going to be refreshed. It's time we responded to how God needs us to be. It's time we it's time we be restored to what God created us to be. It's time we get ourselves connected like we need to be as Samson did and say God in this last hour in this last time in this last days that we have God in this final push for the kingdom God let me be anointed one more time let me be used God one more time Come on, you laid it aside. You laid that calling aside to pursue something else, but that wasn't the will of God for your life. You gave up on it when something bad happened in your life, but God said, that's not it. I can fix this if you'll just surrender it to me again. God hasn't forgotten what he's called you to. Only you've forgotten what God's called you to. There are people in this world today that need you and your life to get in order to what God created it to be. And I firmly believe that the moment that we surrender that to him and we say, God, whatever I have to give up, I'll give up. Whatever I have to sacrifice in my lifestyle, God, I'm going to sacrifice it because the calling, the anointing is more important than that. 